What I'm going to move into now is looking at the steps where there's a huge loss in forage quality. As we say, many have slipped between the cup and the lip. Haylage samples, when I was doing rations, was on 0 0.56, 0 0.57 at the most. A lot of times I'd find them down into the upper fours, real low energy levels. Uh, Karen Hoffman was doing a talk once on rotational grazing and showed me some fresh samples. Fresh samples had the same energy as corn silage. And it was one of those aha moments. Where did it all go? And we started asking questions after that. Where is this feed quality going? If that's what's there when we pull into the field, what is going on? And that's what I'm going to be addressing the rest of this talk. When you look at the traditional hay crop system and looking at, in this case, just alfalfa, just using it for the numbers, a three-ton alfalfa crop has the energy equivalent of about 75 bushel to the acre of corn. That same alfalfa crop, bringing it up only to average no, it's 0.65 rather than 0.7 NEL level, you're looking at almost 90 bushel to the acre of corn equivalent. That is in the feed as you harvest it and get it to the mouth of the cow. So if you're improving the energy in the forage that you're growing on a 275 acre hay crop on a 100 cow farm, we're looking at about 38 acres of corn grain that you are not growing, you are harvesting in the alfalfa crop. And using non-organic grain numbers, you're looking at around $75 an acre difference. And the whole decision and the whole change is what does the person on the tractor do when they pull into the field? That controls how much of that money stays in your pocket and how much ends up being lost. What we are talking about is right here, the non-structural carbohydrates, the sugars and starch. That's where the energy is in your forage. Now, when the sun shines, the plants grow, they produce dry matter. But at the same time, there's respiration going on. Uh, if you had breakfast this morning, your body is burning that off as energy, so it's respiring. And the difference between what the sunshine produces and what respiration takes away is the net gain and the plant grows. It gets bigger. They put plants in the sunshine and we're able to measure the change in weight simply because it takes CO2 and water and converts it into sugars and starch. Now, if that plant is now in the shade so that it's not photosynthesizing or it's nighttime, it's not photosynthesizing, it's still respiring. It's still burning off energy and you get a net loss. They have weighed plants overnight and measured the loss overnight in the weight. And what are you losing? You're not losing the lignin. You're not losing the ADF. What you're losing is the sugars and starches, the energy that produces milk. There's like four slides in this entire talk that you really need to get into your mind. This is one of them. This is the amount of loss that you have overnight, just overnight, depending on the temperature. So if the temperature is here at 60 degrees at night, you are losing 12 to 13 percent of the dry matter. That is all sugar and starch. The protein goes nowhere. The lignin goes nowhere, the ADF goes nowhere, it's the NEL, the net energy of lactation, the stuff that you make milk out of is what's disappearing overnight through respiration. The plant uses sugar for respiration and it tears apart starch. Starch is made of 2,000 to 200,000 sugar molecules. So starch is much more valuable than sugar is. But they're all together, it's still the same sugar molecules. Uh, Knapp and his work found that he lost 11% of the sugar overnight, 24% of the concentrated energy in the starch, just overnight, because the plants are in the dark, they're respiring, they're not photosynthesizing. 
In my own work, we just went out and we mowed about 11 o'clock in the morning. I put it into a narrow windrow, traditional system. And by the beginning of the third day, we had uh, stuff that was dry enough to go ahead and make silage out of. By the beginning of that third day, we had lost 19% of the sugar. We had lost 92% of the concentrated energy in starch. That is a huge loss in energy simply because it's sitting there. Yes. Pardon me? Yes, it looked like we gained sugar the first day, and you're going to see that gain and why that occurs. Uh, there is a little change, very perceptive. The other thing we had to watch out is by the fourth day, we actually showed an increase, but it was actually alcohols produced by the destruction of protein. Uh, is, so it's a whole different, once you get to a certain point, it becomes just an analysis piece. But yes, the sugars go up, and you'll see why in a minute. We're talking about really good feed. This is what it looked like on day three. That is really nice looking stuff. There's a lot of leaves in it, a very lush second cutting, but it did not have the milk producing ability. Now we're not talking about making wet slop. We're talking about making good silage. There are two processes. There's the biology and there's the physics. So we're gonna look at the biology first. So as time goes on, moisture goes down. It's not rocket science. It's just the way things work. Now, what 